So we're going to be factoring mostly trinomials. Whenever you're factoring, generally speaking, the first thing you want to do is look for a common factor first. If you pull out a common factor, it will make the, any other factoring you're doing going to be easier. This first part is actually a review of what we did last week. And then we're going to jump into the newer stuff. So I have 2x plus 16. I want to know what goes into both 2 and 16. 8 does not go into 2. 1 and 2. So I'm looking at 2. I can divide both of these by 2. So I have 2. Divide 2x by 2, I'm left with x. Divide 16 by 2, I'm left with 8. Remember, we're undistributing. That's what we're doing here. We're factoring. We're undistributing here. Okay, this is a review of what we did the first day we did factoring. 18 and 12. So I always look at my numbers first. 18 and 12. What goes into both 18 and 12? 3 does. Is there anything bigger than 3? Six. 18 is divisible by 6. 12 is divisible by 6. So I'm going to pull out a 6. Okay. Now, then we do our variables. Do I have a y in every term? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to pull a y out. Remember, my rule was the y to the smallest power. What's my smallest power? 1. So I pull out a 6y. And then i got to figure out what I have left. 18 divided by 6. That leaves me with, oh, let's not all answer at once. Oh, my bad. Three. And then I had y cubed, so I had three y's. I took out one. I had three, took out one. I'm left with two. So I have y squared. And then minus 12 divided by 6 is? Dose. Two. God. And then I had one Y. I took out one Y. I don't have any more Y's. That's it. Sixteen, twenty, and eight. What goes into sixteen and twenty and eight? And here's something that we didn't talk about in here, but it's something you can do. You can make a number tree. Sixteen is four times four. 20 is 4 times 5. 8 is 4 times 2. What do I have in every one of these? I've got a 4. So what can I pull out front? I can pull a 4. Now the variables are tricky on this one. Do I have an M in every term? What's the smallest power I have on my M's? 1. Do I have an N? In every term, I have an n here. I do not have an n in the second one, so I cannot pull an n out. It has to be in every term or you can't do it. Yeah, so leave those alone. So I took a 4 out. First one, I took out a 4 that left me with a 4. And I had an mn, and I took out the m that leaves me the n. Right. Next number. I had 4 and a 5. I took out the 4. I'm left with the 5. I had 2 M's. I took away 1 that left me with 1 M. No N's because there weren't any N's there. And then minus, I had 4. Took it, I had 4 and 2. I took out the 4. I'm left with the 2. I had an M. It's gone. I'm left with N. N squared. Like I said, this is review, but this is what you generally want to look at doing first before you do what we're about to start learning how to do. Okay, you're not going to do much of it, but it is good to do this right here. Now we're getting into the fun part. Trinomial factoring. Yes? Um, back for 1628, there's 3m, so. though. No, there's not 3m's. Well, there's 2m's and then an m squared. All right, no, there's not 2m's. That's an m and an n. I know. Yeah. You can only take one M out of each term because you cannot take more than what's there. I took one out and I have one left behind. Okay? Okay, so the big X. Here's the deal. You need to fill in the big X. 
And we're going to use this for factoring. And this is where that factor tree, what we did with the listing of the powers and the listing of the multiples, this is what's going to come in really handy in here. So I use this to factor my numbers. Now, what do I have here in front of the x squared? I have a 1. Okay, That eventually will not be a 1. And so things are going to get a little tweaked when we eventually don't have a 1 in front. In fact, that will happen next time we get together. To get the number in the top of your x, you multiply the number in front and the number in the back. 1 times 10 gives me 10. To get the number in the bottom, you use the one in the middle. 7. First thing you do is you fill it in. Multiply the first one and the last one to get the number on top. The one in the middle goes in the bottom. To find these other two numbers, this is where that listing we came up with. What you're looking for is you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 10 and add to give me 7. Now, 10 was not one of the numbers we did, right? Oh my God. So, if you have 10, what are my multiples? I have 1 times 10 and... 2 times 5, which pair multiplies to give me 10, adds to give me 7? 2 and 5. No, it doesn't. Good question, though. It doesn't. It doesn't here. I will let you know when it does matter. We'll get to that. We will get to that today. For the most part, it doesn't matter which one. 5 in front, 2 in the back, 2 in the front, 5 in the back, as long as you have the two numbers there. When you're dealing with negatives and positives, you have to be careful. Okay. Now, the next step, normally I don't do, but we are also trying to prepare for what's coming up. What do I have in front here again? I've got a 1. So what I want to do is I want to take and put a 1x underneath each side. 1x, put another x. And that's where I get my answers from. So my factoring, because remember, what are we doing? We're going backwards. We had the other day, we had x plus something, x plus something equals that. We went this direction. Today we're going in this direction. That's what we're doing. We're undoing what we were just doing the other day. Going backwards. So, so this, is this gives me my factors. This gives me my stuff up here. It's really easy. Bottom and front, top and back. So I get x plus 2. Bottom and front, top and back. x plus, not 2 again, x plus 5. Those are my, that's my answers. Those are my factors. x plus 2, x plus 5. x plus 2, x plus 5. So, if I were to go up here, x plus 2 times x plus 5, foil it out, combine it up, that's what you get. Okay. I tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, I did not know how to, when I was a kid, we didn't have this. I didn't use this for learning, it was a lot of guess and check. And I got really good at it over a long time, and when I first started teaching, they weren't doing this. It wasn't until I'd been teaching a while, and I saw this, and I'm going, oh my god, that is so much easier than what I've been doing. I've been torturing my students. This is so much easier than what I used to do. Okay. So let's factor these. First thing you do, make your big X. Well, you want to make it big enough that you can write in. I say big because kids always write way too small. So in the top, what do I have? I have 1 times 15 to get 15. What do I have in the bottom? I have the 8 from the 8 in the middle. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 5 that add to give me 8. And 15 is on your list. So if you look at your list, yeah, green 5. Okay. And some of you, this is going to go really easy. Some of you making that list is going to be extremely helpful. Okay, making a list of factors, multiples, and some of those will be really helpful. Some of you, oh, I got this. 
this is one of those ones that really separate a lot of people. They, they, get, they get it strong, some people don't. Okay. I have a 1 in front, so I put 1x here and one over 1x there. So my answer is x plus 3, x plus 5. If you want to check, you can foil it out and see if you get the same thing you started with. You do not have to do that, but if you want to do that, you can. Questions so far? Okay, now we're going to add a little twist to it. Same thing. What goes on top? 24. I have a 1 in front here. 1 times 24 gets 24. What goes in the middle? Negative 11. This is where things start getting a little interesting. we got negatives in there now. Not that big a deal, but you got to be careful about it. So, once again, two numbers that multiply to give me 24 that add to give me negative 11. So, when I multiply to get a positive number and I add to get a negative, what do I have to have for these? These both have to be negative. Two negatives multiplied give me a positive. Two negatives added together give me a negative. So three, two numbers that multiply to give me a, multiply to give me 24, add to give me 11. Three and eight, once again, 24 was one of your numbers, right? You're welcome. Put it over an X, put it over an X. My answer in this case is X minus 3, X minus 8. Often I will have students ask me, does it matter the order? And I go, no, you can have X minus 8 times X minus 3. That's just fine. But what's inside the parentheses needs to stay the same. You can just swap the whole set. No, you can't. You can, but you don't want to. You want to have it like this. You want to have the x squared. Yeah, your Yeah, I know, because it's getting old. I think I'm going to have to request getting a TV. I'm going to putting it off. Actually, I asked for it a long time ago. They didn't give me one, but it's yeah, it's, it's flickering pretty bad. It's getting worse. Are you able to get record? Yeah, because recording is not. It's what I write. And the microphone. Wow. So you don't see me. You just see what's on the board, and you hear me talk. If you ever watch it, it can be freaky, actually. And when we see talk, the we can Ken's writing. Talk. Okay, set up the X. <laughs> set up your X. This is one that's going to be very tricky. Or I should say the trickiest one you're going to have today. What number goes on top? Negative 15. This is important. I have a one year, negative 15. What goes in the bottom? Two. Two. So, to get a negative number on top, I have to multiply a positive and a negative value. Now, we did multiples of 15, right? We got 1 and 15 and 3 and 5. 1 and 15 are never going to combine to give me 2. And because this is negative, I have to subtract them. So my answer is going to deal with 3 and 5. So I'm going to have a 3 and a 5. Now, and I, I, know, I know what you, you've got it right, but I want to just... Which one's negative, which one's positive? Here's a trick. What sign is this? Whatever sign this is, is the sign of my larger number. So which one's positive? Which one's negative? I should say which one's positive, the 3 or the 5? The 5 is positive because the number down here is positive. The bigger number here is positive. This is negative. Ooh, I hope we can make it. Okay. Put it over x. Put it over x. What is our answer? x minus 3 and x plus 5. Now, what? Yeah. And you'll you'll have several of them like this where the last number is negative. And you have one of each. Extremely important. You cannot swap which one's negative and which one's positive. You will not get the same thing. If you had x plus 3 and x minus 5, that would be a negative 2x instead of a positive 2 in the middle. You cannot swap which one's negative and which one's positive. 
You can swap which pair you have in front. I can have x plus 5, x minus 3. It does not matter order which pair. It does matter which one's negative and which one's positive. You cannot just change those back and forth. Okay? Questions? Oh, I love this x. The x is, oh my god, it's the best thing. Did I learn how to do that? Is that in Yes. Oh, that's oh, been around for forever. Okay, so what they're saying is I've got a rectangle and my area is this. How do you find area? Multiplying the length and the width. So what I have to do is I have to factor that to find the two things that multiply to give me that. That's what this question is saying. What two things multiply to give me this? In other words, factor it. What goes on top? Negative 35. What goes on the bottom? Negative 2. So I want two numbers, and 35 I believe is one of your numbers list, right? Two numbers that are separated by 2. What? It's not 35, it's not. Oh, okay. So I got 1 and 35. Two dozen, three dozen, five and seven. Hey, that's my choices. Which one of these are separated by two? Five and seven. Which one's negative? Five. The seven on this one, because remember, whatever this is, is the larger number is that. So, put them over x, and I get x plus 5 times x minus 7. Okay, uno mas. Another one. Another one. Okay. This one's really kind of different, isn't it? Yeah, so I've got x squared, and I've got y squared, and I've got xy. Really not that much more difficult. Here's the thing: you got an extra variable in the end. If it's y squared, so if I have a squared and a variable in the front, a squared variable in the in the end, and in the middle I have one of each, it's really not a big deal. I still do the same thing. I just tack a y onto the end of each one of them. So I still do the same setup. I still set up an x, and in the top I would have. In this case, negative 55, and in the bottom I would have 6. And 1 and 55 and 5 and 11, and that's it. And it's negative, so it's going to be 5 and 11, right? Which one's negative? The 5. The 5. And if you want to double check, just in your head, ooh, 11 times negative 5 is 55. 11 minus 5 is 6. I've got them right. So I have the x here and the x here. So I get x plus 11, and I'm going to leave a little space. x minus 5, and I'm going to leave a little space. What do I need to put in that little space? A y, because I have a y squared here. I have to have a y and a y to give me a y squared when I multiply. Nice. So it's not that hard if you got that extra variable in there. You're not going to see that very often, but you will see it once in a while. Okay. Any questions? Okay. You've been a great audience. <laughs>